Howdy, I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I record and share all of my lectures. I share all of my educational content, including hundreds of well-documented and interactive workflows. Well, it turns out I have about 50 right now data science interactive workflows, and I get a lot of questions about them. So I thought I'll record a brand new series on my YouTube channel where I walk through these workflows. Do you want to follow along? Today we're going to cover distribution transformations, an important tool within your feature engineering arsenal. So go to my GitHub account and I have a repository called Python Numerical Demos. If you click on that, there are going to be many workflows. All of the interactive workflows shown here are the ones that will be have dashboards, Python dashboards, so that we can demonstrate concepts. Interactive distribution transformations is right there. So I already have it loaded up, ready to go. Go ahead and load that up. Let's work through this together. If you want more details about feature engineering, distribution transformations, in fact, I have recorded lectures on all of those topics, including distribution transformations right here. Let's talk about what distribution transformations are. Okay, so with the distribution transformation, what we're going to do is map our feature to a new feature with a new distribution. For example, we could transform our feature, the data, to have a Gaussian distribution. That would be a distribution transformation. Now remember, this is not just stretching, squeezing, shifting. This is not standardization or normalization. We're talking about really changing the distribution, i.e. even the shape of the distribution. All right, so distribution transformation. What is it? Why do we do it? Well, there's a couple of reasons we do it. One is inferential. We may know that the feature should have a specific distribution shape. The central limit theorem may be a factor. And so we expect Gaussianity, for example. And so by transforming the feature to that expected shape, we're using additional information to improve our models. You see that? So it's inferential. Also data preparation and cleaning. We're correcting for data paucity. It's noisy. There's outliers. We can clean up our data with a distribution transformation. In theory, sometimes we need a specific distribution to apply a data science step. And so what we're doing is we're correcting our data to have that distribution so we don't invalidate an assumption and cause issues with our data science operation. Okay, let's talk about exactly what distribution transformations are. What we're going to do is for every one of our sample data, x alpha alpha equals 1 through n data, we apply the following transformation. Now, let me remind you of something. The fx, it's a capital F, that indicates that it's the cumulative distribution function of x, the original feature. So just imagine a CDF here. So when we take individual sample values, the alpha indicates a sample index from 1 to n. We take a specific value, we put it in this, it's like going like this, which we call the forward of the CDF. So what comes out is going to be a cumulative probability. Then we put a cumulative probability into g of y, which is the target distribution, so f of x, the original distribution, g of y, the target distribution. We feed into it a probability. So what's actually happening is we have the inverse of that CDF. So now we're going across and coming down. Now don't worry, I'm going to show you figures. I'm not going to just draw on the error the whole time. Our dashboard will show this interactively. But that's exactly what a distribution transformation is. Let's summarize it, give a couple points. It's a mapping from one distribution to another through cumulative probabilities, i.e. percentiles. This may be applied to any parametric or non-parametric distribution. We're going to show it for the case of going to a parametric distribution and also to a non-parametric. And it's rank preserving. I hope I hope you, this is immediately apparent that the P50 in the f of x distribution, the x feature, is the P50 in the y feature, the g of y CDF. So we're not mixing up the samples. We're transforming them, but we preserve the percentiles. The P10 is still the P10. The P25 is still the P25, and so forth. Distribution transformation the dashboard. I'm going to demonstrate it for two different dashboards where I go original data to non-parametric 
and original data to parametric. We'll do both. I think we do the parametric first. Okay, how are you going to get set up and ready to go? As long as you have Anaconda installed, you should be fine. I have done a refresh. I installed a brand new version of Anaconda just um, this fall 2023 20, semester. Go ahead and just, as long as you're up to date, I do tend to update these codes. So if there's a major issue, my students will let me know and we'll keep them up to date. So if you're up to date, we should be fine. Let's go ahead and do a kernel, restart and run all. That'll make sure that everything is nice and fresh. We're ready to go. Now you'll notice I do a little, I'll go back up here. You'll notice I do a little hiding the warnings. I do have a couple of deprecated command warnings. It's not a big deal. I'll, those will get fixed. We're going to go ahead and import our packages. Okay, and so we're ready to go. These are all basic packages that are installed in Anaconda. We'll go ahead and load a data set. This load data set is in my GeoDatasets repository, which has many spatial subsurface data sets for you to use to practice. And I use them in my workflows, but also in case you want to, to try to test something. We can read that. In this case, it's a CSV file. So we have a nice little seed read CSV uh, command that we can use. We'll go ahead and run that. Then what we'll do is we'll do a little preview by slicing the top six samples. Uh, the head command is really nice. It's convenient. It gives you a nice data frame output, which we have a nice clean representation of the first samples. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate and plot a CDF by hand. Now, since we're going to do a lot of stuff with CDFs, let's just make sure we're comfortable with CDFs. Okay, the steps of building a CDF, cumulative distribution function. Let me just show you, just in case anybody's sitting here, I say CDF, 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 and you forgot what that is. It is a plot of the data where the X is data values, the Y is cumulative probability. Okay, and, and you notice the points. The points are the actual data values, and the lines are linear interpolation between the points, piecewise linear interpolation, I should say. Okay, so you remember what a CDF is? How do we calculate it from the data? First step, you go make a copy of the data if you like. We're going to sort the data and just so we don't get kind of mixed up. If we're doing shallow copies, it could change stuff in our data frame. Then we're going to go ahead and sort the data in ascending order. That's important. We're going to assign cumulative probabilities based on tail assumptions. Now, if you look right here, I have four different tail assumptions, known upper tail, known lower tail, known upper and lower tail, unknown tails. Now, when is this important? Well, first of all, this is how we extrapolate outside the data and we say, well, is the lowest value the P0 or is there a tail we didn't sample? And what's the chance that we sample the absolute minimum and maximum values, right? So we have different ways to do that. I have it in my when I talk about distributions, uh, CDFs in my lecture notes, uh, you'll see I have a lot of descriptions of this, but you can go ahead and comment out and check, pick the one you want to use. When you have a lot of data, this becomes not too important of a point. After we assign the cumulative probabilities, all we have to do is plot cumulative probability versus values, and that's how we got this plot right here. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Just to clarify here, um, the cumulative probabilities are going to be equal intervals over the number of samples. We're not doing any weighting or anything like that here. Um, we'll talk about declustering later and weighting. Okay, let's go ahead and demonstrate this concept of a distribution transformation to a parametric distribution. All we have to do is map through cumulative probabilities from one set of data to the other. And so to do this, what we can do is we can go ahead and we already calculated cumulative probabilities for our data back here. You see that cumulative probabilities right there. And so all we have to do now is say apply those cumulative probabilities to the inverse of the CDF. Now in SciPy package, Python package, in the stats module, one of my favorites, we have a norm command, the normal distribution. PPF is the inverse of the CDF. We also have the CDF too. So we can go ahead, PPF will give us the inverse. We just give it each one of the values right here. We tell it the mean and the standard deviation, that's location, scale, lock, scale. And that will give us the inverse of the Gaussian distribution standard normal, zero mean variance of one. And so that is all we have to do. We calculated the cumulative probabilities, we find out what they are in the parametric distribution, and we replace the values with those. Okay, let's look at what it looks like. This is the original CDF. This is the transform CDF. 
That's a beautiful looking S curve. That's exactly what we expect for a Gaussian CDF. Okay, so the world's a happy place and you can also confirm visually ocular inspection mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. So meaning the values range about plus or minus three standard deviations. So here we go. Let's go ahead and build a interactive dashboard and make sure that we fully understand this. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. We go ahead and we got the very first data value. That's the original data value of 0.06. And when we calculate that, percentile value it's uh it's below my significant significant digits i can't really see it but it's point zero something cumulative probability okay let's go ahead and we'll move up through the data okay this is the 0.04th percentile value that's 11. that's the 11th data i'm skipping by 10. and so you can see its original value was 0 0.08 in the original feature x the y feature transformed we just went up Calculate the cumulative probability for that value just by sorting and using the tail assumption. We come over here, all the way over here, boom. So the forward on the original distribution gets you a cumulative probability. The inverse with that cumulative probability gets you a new value in that new distribution. Boom, boom, boom. That's all we're doing. And we get a Gaussian associated value. The, the value in the Gaussian distribution, standard normal, is negative 1.73. And we can keep repeating, boom, Boom, we keep doing that. We keep skipping along here by 0 0.04 cumulative probabilities. Boom, 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 we're stepping up here. And you'll notice this circle right here. What we're actually doing is we're plotting the original value versus the transform value. And if you do that over all of the data, guess what you got? You got a QQ plot, which is a way to compare two distributions to each other. If they fall on the 45 degree line, they're the same. You can see slope difference indicates changes in variance offsets indicate changes in mean. I have a QQ and P, P plot uh, lecture. You can look through my lecture notes, my, my data analytics uh, course. Okay, so that was distribution transformation. Every time you see that equation, just imagine up, go forward in the original CDF, go across and come down backwards or the inverse in the target CDF to get the associated value. That's a distribution transformation. Now, because we're transforming to a Gaussian distribution, for any cumulative probability, boom, we have a function. We can actually get the inverse of the uh, CDF for Gaussian. When we work with non-parametric distributions, things get a little more complicated. So let's go ahead and repeat this process, and we're going to show you what it looks like. I had an original sparse data set. I have a more densely sampled data set. And what I want to do is I said this data set should have the same distribution as this. And this is a common issue, is that the sparse comes from a data stream where you just don't have many samples. But the denser data stream has a more reliable distribution. So you're transforming, you're saying I'm correcting the sparsely sampled data to have the right distribution from a more densely sampled feature. Okay, and so in this case, they're both porosities. That you'd expect them both to be the same units, measuring the same locations, uh, so that it's equivalent or it's analogous at least. And that happens. Reference distributions and geostats where you assume that, okay, do you want me to carry on? I'll just stop right there. There's a l lot of reasons to do this. Okay, so what is the complexity here? And the complexity here, let me go ahead. I'm going to show a transformation right here where we have our sparse data and I'm going to plot our transform data. This data value becomes that data value. This data value becomes that data value. So what we have to do is I calculate the cumulative probability value for each one of these samples in the original distribution. Okay, we already did that. Not a big deal. The tail assumptions, all of that, equal binning and cumulative probability for each of the values. Um, if you look at this tail assumption, I'm assuming I know the upper tail, not the lower tail. You see I have a P100 here, not the P0. Okay, now what we have to do is for this specific cumulative probability, we have to find the value in the new distribution, but we don't have a continuous function. That means we need a model for interpolation. And the simplest model we can use is we'll take the dense data, create a CDF out of it, and then we'll assume piecewise linear between the data. Do you see this right here, these lines? That's piecewise linear. So all I have to do is for each one of the cumulative probability values, when I read the inverse, I find out data values that it fall in between 
for instance, I could intercept right here, and then I do a piecewise linear interpolation between those two data values to get the associated inverse of the non-parametric CDF. So it's not a big deal. We just have to formulate a simple model. If you have a lot of data, piecewise linear is fine. If you have sparser data, you'll, you, it'll, it'll look kind of like this. It's kind of not well behaved. You may want to think about using a more complicated model that has smoother, better behavior for the CDF. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll build a dashboard to demonstrate the data to non-parametric distribution. So you can see we're going from this point right here, cumulative probability value of 0.03, and where we get the associated value here. Now, it is a pretty dense set there, so you can't really see the linear interpolation. Let's go ahead and move our way up here. We're going through the data values. We're transforming them each from this original distribution into this target, better behaved distribution here. And as you can see, let me see, that's maybe a pretty good example right there. If you zoomed in there, you'd be able to see that we're doing a linear interpolation between the points in the non-parametric CDF in order to get this associated value right there. If we take the original data and the transform values and we plot them against each other, we get the QQ plot, and you can see the differences between the two distributions, the departure from the 45 degree line. I went on way too long. This has been a nice example or demonstration of distribution transformations, a powerful tool within feature engineering, your toolkit. There's lots of reasons we want to do it. The last step here is I just showed taking the transform values, adding it to your data frame. Boom, original porosity, transform porosity, and away we go. All right, I hope this was useful to you. I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I share all of my educational content to support my students with evergreen content that outlasts the semester. I also want to support working professionals and encourage all, consider STEM. Wonderful field. I want to encourage people to consider engineering, science, and other technological fields. You can do it. All right, everyone, take care.